I'm up? Oh, hey. Horizon HQ, episode two. Welcome to HQ, everyone. Uh, this episode, we got some good things in store for you. Uh, we're going to go through today uh, just a little bit more technical stuff. We're going to be talking about hydrogen production and storage. And for those two items, we're going to be talking about our Hydrofill Pro and Hydrostick Pro. Um, in addition to that, um, I guess we got some other cool things lined up. But uh, Stephen, go ahead, do your introduction. Hey, what's up, everyone? Stephen here. Andrew? Yes, Andrew here as well. <laughs> All right, um, so I guess we're going to be going through, as I mentioned, and then in addition to that, uh, this week, this Saturday, we have our SoCal uh, practice race for the Horizon Grand Prix. We're looking forward to seeing all of you coming. Uh, and then let's just get kind of going here. Steven. Yes. How can we talk about some hydrogen production? Hydrogen production. The best way to start talking about hydrogen production is to talk about hydrogen. Uh, I have three different hydrofills here set up. Um, I think the first thing to consider when you pull this thing out, you open it up, you take it out of the box, you plug it in, but the first thing you're going to see is blinking red light here. We got that on camera? Okay. Blinking red light. What does that mean? If you notice, I'm going to unplug this for a second. On the back here, there's a little bit of a diagram that kind of tells you what each one means, but I'll go into that anyways. Um, Blinking red light is, it has no water in it. So the first thing you want to do is get your distilled or deionized water only, and you want to fill it into the, if, you're, if it's facing you, the right side, or the side with the little blue donut in it. Okay, so second thing is once that's filled, you should get the next light, which is a blinking green. The blinking green means you're ready to go. You're ready to put in a hydro stick and start filling. Hey, Steven? Yes. Why are we using water in the first place, though? Uh, water is the most abundant source of hydrogen on planet Earth. H2O, right? So, which is? Uh, which is hydrogen and oxygen. You have two hydrogens for every oxygen, so you have twice the amount of hydrogen as you do oxygen in every molecule of water. That's why we use water. And so what we're doing is we're undergoing a process called electrolysis. We talked about it a little bit in our last episode, um, but this is going to get a little more detailed into how we can use electrolysis to our benefit to uh, create energy and to produce work. Uh, okay, so back to it. Um, so once you're ready to go, bleaking green means you're good to go. The next thing you do is you're going to screw your hydro stick in. And from there, when this thing's charging, you're going to get a solid red light. Okay? Um, Let's watch you screw one in if that's cool. Sure. So if you notice, if I take this out, give it a minute, it's going to start turning green, bleaking green. That means we're ready to fill. Okay, so from there, you take your hydro stick, screw it in. Don't screw it in super tight, just until it's about snug. You notice I'm only using two fingers. It's going very lightly. And when it's ready, you guys, so if you notice that noise, what that noise is, is because we're splitting water, you have hydrogen and you have oxygen, like we already discussed. So the hydrogen is being pumped through into our, our hydro stick. The oxygen just gets vented out to the atmosphere, which is the little kind of puff you hear. Uh, when you guys have these on your desk or you're using them, it might startle you when you're first getting used to these um, because every so often they're going to puff and they're going to make a noise. And if you're not used to it, it's, it's a little off-putting. So uh, just throwing that out there now just so we're ready and it uh, doesn't scare anyone. Uh, okay, so we understand the hydrofill. We understand how to plug it in and assemble it and make it work. But how does it work in size? What's, what are we actually doing? So what I did here, and I don't recommend doing this, you can see that I took the front face plate off of this. Don't do this to your hydrofill because it will void your warranty. Um, but for the sake of science, I took this one apart so we can see what's going on. And basically, I, is it better this way? Let's do it this way. That works. OK. So first thing you have in here is your electrolyzer. And what this is doing is it's taking the water from the top, it's splitting it in half like we discussed, and it is running it through a filter to make sure you're getting really clean hydrogen, and then it's running it through a, um, oh, what is this called? We're basically building up the pressure here so that we can run it into our, give me just a second. 
So you have a nice empty hydro stick. You put it in here, screw it in, and the electrolyzer here will take the hydrogen out of the water and it'll pump it into your stick. At a pressure of roughly around 30, uh, 30 bar. Uh, anybody know that conversion? We'll let you guys figure it out. Chime in and let us know. Before I get too far, do we have any questions? I'll leave this here for now. Any questions? No any questions, questions, Captain? No questions coming through on the chat just yet. No questions coming through your chat. Okay. I think you're doing such a great job that there's no need for questions, clearly. You know what? I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so I think it's pretty basic. If you understand the process of electrolysis, you understand an idea of how this works and how it goes into the uh, hydro stick. So from here, I think it's important to move to the actual hydro stick so we understand, first of all, we understand how the hydrofill fills the hydro stick. Now let's understand how the hydro stick actually works. Okay, so uh, we're going to move to our next table here. Well, that's great. We did have a question come in. Oh, what was that? A gentleman asked, how do I know if a stick is full or empty? Thank you for writing in. Oh, awesome. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, I don't have a full stick or the stick is a stick one yet, but you'll see this solid red light turn to a solid green. You notice know, these two, or this one is that solid green, that means you're ready to fill. Once the hydro stick is actually full, it'll turn a solid green. So once you have solid green, your hydro stick's full, uh, and you can go from there. You can use it to uh, conduct your experiments. Cool? Hopefully that has worked out for you. Uh, okay, so let's go back to over here and let's understand exactly what what the hydro stick is, how it works, and uh, some cool experiments we might be able to do. I guess, Stephen, one question I think would be great to address would be, what are some other hydrogen production methods outside of hydrofill? Because a lot of these students, they're probably using our equipment, mm -hmm. but outside of the hydrofill pro that they use in the classroom, how are they actually generating hydrogen in the everyday to day world, I guess? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. So the main way or the uh, the main way, the, the most popular way and the, the cheapest way currently to make hydrogen is through a process called methane steam reformation. Um, they pretty much pump really hot steam into a chamber full of uh, methane and through a chemical process it breaks the bonds uh, from the methane which is CH4. Uh, the carbon binds with the oxygen and, from the steam and the hydrogen is all kind of get grouped up together, and then you would take the hydrogen from there and pump it into whatever your storage container is. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much the basic idea of how that works. Also, the next uh, most popular method, um, that, uh, one that's really popular right now because everyone's trying to figure out a, a way to make it more efficient is through electrolysis, and that's what we're working with now. Um, and that's a technology that I think we need to develop because it's a lot cleaner. Uh, it's a lot cleaner for the environment. It's a lot cleaner for everyone. Uh, and there's no emissions. Through methane steam reformation, there are some emissions. So again, we're, we're trying to promote renewable energy here. Not the best way to go. What do, you, what do you mean by it's more efficient, being the fact that electrolysis? Is it using a certain like yeah, so technology? The, problem, the main problem with electrolysis and the main holdup right now is that it requires a lot of energy to do it. Um, and so that's why a lot of people right now are working on ways to use less energy to split water in half. It requires a lot of energy to split water. Um, roughly 15 kilowatts per every kilogram. 15 kilowatts of energy for every kilogram of hydrogen produced. It's a rough estimate. Um, so that's pretty energy intensive. Um, and again, that's why we're trying to promote this technology so we come up with more efficient ways to do that. So does that answer the question? It does. One person asks, what sound does the hydrofoam make? The hydrofill is pretty quiet until it uh, kind of until the oxygen releases, and then you're getting to a point where you just hear a psh really loud. And that's something I talked about earlier. When it's on your desk and you're not ready for it, it might make that sound. Don't be alarmed. Uh, that's just the oxygen venting out. You guys might have just heard that right there. Can we hear a react from the band? Psh. <laughs> okay. All right. And then. Uh, for those writing in, how long does it take to empty your fill stick? We're gonna go into that right now. Uh, yeah, really good question. How long does it take to fill a stick? Um, through the hydrofill, because it's, it's relatively low pressure, it takes about five hours to fill one stick. Um, and inversely, it takes roughly about 10 seconds for a stick to empty. So, okay. So how long does it take for the 
hydrogen hydro stick to be charged? I'm going to say about five hours. Okay. And then to empty, roughly about 10 seconds, if you're venting it straight to atmosphere. So if you're running it through a fuel cell, uh, depending on the load of the fuel cell, it, it takes a considerable amount longer. Okay. Yeah. Any other uh, hydrofill-related questions? Um, I think that's pretty much all good. I think one of the last things is, can we charge overnight, and can we leave water in it? Yeah, you can charge them overnight. Um, because it takes so long for these things to charge, I would actually recommend, you could probably get two filled a day. As soon as you show up in the morning to your class or wherever you're at, your lab, uh, immediately stick one in there, uh, turn it, and you should go from the blinking green to the solid red, meaning it's charging. Uh, and then once that one's done later on in the day, um, I would suggest pulling that one out, putting another one in, and letting that one go overnight. That way the next day you can come in, pull the full one out, put another uh, empty one in and you can just keep that cycle going. Also a good thing to do is uh, create a charging schedule. All right, it, it can get, sometimes you can kind of forget, you know, when you charge them or how long they've been charging for. So it's good to label the sticks, you know, just put a little one or a two or A, B or however you want to do it. Um, and then create a charging schedule. That way you're more organized and you have all of your energy there uh, and it's easier to keep track of everything. What was the other question? Can you leave water in it? Yeah, you can leave water in it. We don't recommend that you, if you're gonna leave it sitting over the summer or over more than a month or two, um, I would recommend emptying it out and leaving the, the fuel cell or the electrolyzer inside of it dry. Um, so what happens is if, if you leave water in this, the even though there is a very small amount still in the uh, yeah, distilled water, um, you could get a little bit of oxidation or some of the mineral content could um, mess up the uh, interior part of the electrolyzer, making it less efficient or even not work. So if you're going to leave it for an extended amount of time, don't leave water in it. But if, if you're using it and you're leaving it over the weekend or you know, maybe a week or two at the most, shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't have an issue with it. Um, but again, if you're going to be leaving it over the summer or over a long break, Take the water out, store it in uh, some type of airtight container, and uh, just keep your thing running strong for a long time. All right. How about we go to the hydro stick? Hydro hey, stick. Before we go into it, what's inside of it? What is inside the hydro stick? That's a really good question. Uh, the chemical makeup of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, is lampium nickel metal hydride. Sure. That's okay. just about right. That's, that's just about right. Uh, so what that means is it's a bunch of metal dust and metal powder um, kind of shoved into a one of these cylinders here. And in case you're wondering um, what is actually, well, the first thing we do this, let's talk about how it works specifically. So the way I think about this is it's kind of like a sponge. All right. There's a bunch of material, a bunch of metal dust in here, and those spaces in between the metal dust are what hold the hydrogen. So if you think about it like a sponge here, so our sponge is our metal hydride substrate, and the water here is our hydrogen. What's happening is the hydrogen is being pumped into the metal hydride substrate. I don't know if you guys can see this, but now all the water moisture is there. So this is the charging process. You're basically filling the sponge up with all the moisture. And then the discharging process, that's all the hydrogen coming out. So that, that's an easy way that I like to do to demonstrate it or to show more or less what it's doing and how it works. Um, but if you actually physically want to see what's inside the fuel cell or uh, what's inside the metal hydride stick, I definitely do not recommend cutting one open to check it out. Um, there is the potential for um, fire or some kind of um, combustion, you have a really reactive metal and material inside the stick itself. So if you're trying to cut this thing open, I really would not recommend doing that. Uh, this one right here, we have opened and we have cut this one. Uh, shout out to Marcos from Oakwood, thanks for this. Um, but what's going on inside here is... In our attempts to keep all this dust together, so this is just a napkin that we uh, kind of use to hold some of the dust here to kind of contain it. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of metal dust here, and this one's been cut open with a bandsaw. Again, we really don't recommend you guys do this. Uh, the potential for fire 
or explosion is, is pretty high, so don't do it. Uh, but you can learn from us and what we've done here. Um, it's just filled with a bunch of metal dust, right? And so like we kind of talked about, that metal dust, uh, just like the sponge here, fills up with hydrogen, and when you want to use it, it empties it out. And it's basically that simple. I'm going to use this to clean my hands off a little bit. Dan, you want to help me out here? Draw a demonstration? We're going to do a demonstration drawing, just so you can kind of get an idea. So why don't you go ahead and draw us a little cylinder or a little version of the hydro, bill, or hydro stick. Perfect. And then you give us a little spout there. Let's, okay. So what I want you to do is draw a line of circles, maybe three by three. So three this way, three down, and then just fill it in. Okay, that works. So the circles here are our metal hydride substrate. Okay. And so what the hydrogen is going to do, if you want to, in between all these, put little X's. So the hydrogen is going to come in those little pockets, like we talked about, and it's going to bond this and it's going to bond as a solid and the main advantage of that is it's really stable and it's really safe the problem is that you will notice with when you're filling the hydrofill is this process creates heat so that as the hydro sticks are filling in right when they're done you're going to notice that they are going to get warm okay why is that um it's basically due to the chemical reactions inside of them it would it be because of expansion in between the pump because it's expanding and filling in the gaps a little bit could be uh, that's it uh, maybe Maybe, I don't know. I'm not maybe. a scientist on this ship. But well, I think it also may be, may be due to that. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but so that's what's going on inside. So that's the number one question we get asked. What's inside of them? How do they work? I think you guys have a pretty good idea of what's inside of them now and how they work. And I think um, another really good explanation that I've heard over the years is think of like a bathtub filled with like rocks and then you pour sand in between the sand going in between the rocks is kind of the hydrogen fitting into the small gaps uh, between the metal alloy. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Thank like you, Stephen. That. That's Thank a very you. good analogy. Uh, okay, so that's on the inside. So yeah, the hydrogen sinking in and filling it in, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a very small canister. How much hydrogen can be stored in here? Roughly about 10 liters. And I say roughly because there is a bit of a spectrum, plus or minus. There, there's a small degree of, uh, you know, plus or minus there, but roughly about 10 liters. And that, that, that's a good question. So all these people that are using these in the rigs, do, does every hydrofill have the same amount of hydrogen inside of it, or a metal, or can it differ? Uh, it does differ. Each, each hydro stick, if you, so the number one thing that I re recommend doing when you're working with the hydro sticks, the first thing you should do is weigh them. Uh, this is just a simple jeweler scale here. You can find these basically uh, anywhere. They're pretty cheap. Uh, and the main advantage of doing this is you can know how much you're actually filling these with. So this one here is empty. How do you know it's empty? What is the base for? How do you know if it's empty? Uh, I know it's empty because I pulled this one fresh out of the box and I held the, uh, okay. the so regulator on it and I made sure it was empty. Okay, perfect. So for the sake of this experiment, I know for sure this one's empty. Okay. So what's the weight? So the weight of this one is, was that? 91.9. 91.9 grams, so about 92 grams. Okay. Is, there, is there an average for what the hydro sticks normally weigh? I would say you're, and again, it is a spectrum. Some of them are gonna be slightly heavier, some of them are gonna be slightly lighter, yep. um, but it's about 92 to 93 grams empty. Average. Average, okay. right? Some of them might be you know, 91, maybe high 90s. Some of them might be closer to so, 93. So for those of you in the program, it sounds like it'd be a good idea to start off out of the box, Again, label everyone, fill them, weigh it before, weigh it after, and see what the difference is. Exactly. Because is it possible for some hydro sticks to store more than others? Yes, it is. Would, um, would that affect at what point in the race you using those? Would that make sense? Any strat? Yeah, that, that definitely goes into strategy. I mean, if you're at a certain point of the race and you know your energy is running low, if your battery voltages are low, and you need to really rely on the fuel cell, I, that's where you would put the ones with maybe a little bit more hydrogen in there so you can get a little bit more runtime out of it. Okay, um, 10 liters in there. 10 liters in here. You're crazy. Am I? How many, I guess, what's, what's a good analogy for 10 liters in terms of size so, so that if, students can relate that? In, a in terms a of really size. good relatable analogy is if you had a two liter bottle of soda, five of those, if you filled five of those with hydrogen, that would equal the same amount of hydrogen as one of these. So that's, that's a lot of hydrogen. That's a good amount of hydrogen. Yeah, it's, it's pretty energy dense. So um, is there any way we have... If we fill up a balloon right now, can we show everyone how much hydrogen comes out? And will it be at that same size or not? 
Uh, it will not be that same size. There are some physics that we're going to have to overcome. We're not going to be able to completely fill a balloon with hydrogen. Let's, let's, so try, let's it try it. Let's try it out and see how this works out. Okay. I'm always, uh, so I love experimentation, so let's do this. this. How are we looking here? Are we live on this one? Oh, yeah. Okay, ready? So we got the pressure regulator, regulator on here. We're going to go ahead and fill it up. This is a fully filled balloon. Dan, do you know what the pressure coming out of the pressure regulator is? 0.45 bar. 0.45, yeah, that's really good. So is this all the hydrogen that's in here? No, that's all the hydrogen that this can push in. Again, because the pressure is coming out so low, mm -hmm. there are some, so you have the back pressure of the hydrogen that's in there fighting against it, as well as the pressure to expand the balloon. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not gonna be able to fill this up completely, but that's a pretty good idea of how we can capture hydrogen. Okay. Right, from our stick. And just so you know, hydrogen is a lot lighter than air. So if you were to vent this straight to the atmosphere, the hydrogen is going to go up. So if I tied this, better. would it flow? No. The hydrogen in there is a lot, it's not as dense as the plastic in the balloon. So the balloon, the weight of the plastic is going to pull it down. So it just expands. Hydrogen, different, I guess for, I guess this is a good thing for going into automotive. There's one positive, like when I say hydrogen safety, is hydrogen quickly expands upwards, right? Yeah. So in comparative in a vehicle, if gasoline falls everywhere, that's one of the safety things that they say is beneficial to hydrogen cars, correct? Yeah. Yeah, hi the hydrogen will just leak out, and it'll leak out really quickly, um, and basically just evaporate, or not evaporate, but it'll just vent out into the atmosphere, and you don't have to worry about it pooling and getting all over you as, as you would with gasoline. So I'm noticing right now that it's cold. You said it gets hot when it expands. Why is it cold? Uh, because the opposite's now happening. If we think back to this yeah. model here, and we can do this. Now this is it. The reverse is it. So expanding? this is the reverse, right? Well, well now it ain't maybe more. not that far. But but yeah. So now the reverse is happening. Now all the energy is coming out of the all your hydrogen here, right? Is going out, and so the reverse is happening because we're expanding and filling all the spaces in between. When we fill it and it gets hot, the reverse is happening. All that energy is just going out, and so it is getting cold. Right on. That's yeah, interesting. So is there any way that you could use the cold or it would be the cold during the car? Is there any benefit of having the cold, the cold fuel cell metal next to the fuel cell to improve efficiencies? This is going a little bit ahead, but. Yes, that's a very good question. So, like a heat shrink on a motor, motors get hot. Can you the use... motor gets hot and, the, and the, the motor controllers get hot. So that could be a pretty good strategy to improve efficiency if you find a way to strap the uh, hydro sticks mm -hmm. somewhere close to the motor and or motor controller. That could be a really good way to cool them down during the race. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. Andrew, do we have any questions coming in? Can you help us out with those while we're kind of chatting? Uh, and start. Huh? I think one of the, one of the questions was uh, how do you know the difference between yeah, it's just from an empty, the difference between empty and So, can you, is there anybody to tell a stick is empty without plugging it into the hydro Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you don't want to test it, right? Because... Well, you could test it. I mean, so the, the quickest and easiest way, like a field test that I usually do a lot uh, mm -hmm. when you don't have a lot of time to figure it out, is you grab a regulator, stick it on there, and if you turn it all the way, nothing comes out. You don't hear it. Can you hear it? No. It's empty. Uh, opposite, if you have one that's full and you're not sure, you see that? I feel you hear it coming out, but also realize how quickly it's escaping. Five hours to charge, how quickly to disperse if you're not that's paying already, attention? That's already about empty. So, so that plays into another strategy that you could potentially use. Uh, when you're actually taking the hydro sticks out and putting them back in your fuel cell, if you put one in, and tighten it all the way, and then put the other one in, this one will probably be empty by the time you have the other one screwed in. So a really good strategy is to find a way to screw them both in at the same time. Um, and that's because it's a closed circuit system. If you open the circuit system, it's gonna get into the atmosphere. So, another so, question, Dan. You're on a roll. Hydrogen, it's the number one molecule on the... Universe. The universe, the, large, the most abundant. Most abundant molecule in the universe. So it's the most abundant, so that's one of the large reasons why we want to use it in an automotive setting, correct? Or in any general purposes for energy, right? It's, yeah. right? it's not readily available, but it's out there, and we could frack for it, or that's not the right term, but it's opposite of fracking, right? So we could capture it in different ways, which is what there's we're a, talking about via electrolysis. There's a lot of ways to capture hydrogen um, with the current infrastructure that we have. There are some dirty ways to do it. We talked about methane steam reformation, but in the future, uh, 
we're promoting uh, renewable energy and, yeah. and ways of making clean energy. Electrolysis is the best way to do it. And a really easy way to do that, and a really popular way to do that, is to do it with solar. You take solar energy. The great thing about solar is it's really good. There's a lot of energy, but then at night when there's no sun, uh, there's no energy. So a really good alternative is to take that solar energy, convert it into hydrogen, and then at night or whenever you need that energy, then you convert it back into electricity through a fuel cell. Now I have a really good question. So this is not the same storage method as vehicles as the Toyota Mirai, one of the best hydrogen cars out there. Toyota Mirai, great car. Um, <laughs> they do not use metal hydride. Why is that? Because I'm, from my understanding, they use pressurized hydrogen storage. Yes. So why are we using metal hydride? Um, that has to do with weight. As okay. you scale this up, so the main reason we use metal hydride is first of all, a lot of students are using this, yep. and so it's just really safe. Again, we talked about it being stored at really low pressure, being stored as a solid, so it's a very safe way to store hydrogen. Yeah. Um, with that being said, it's not the most efficient way to store it because this is, like we checked on the weight, you know, 10 liters of hydrogen should not weigh roughly 90 grams, okay? And if you scale that up to the factor of a Mirai, your hydrogen storage is gonna be really, really heavy. And so, so not the most optimum way. It's not the optimal in a car, but in terms of efficiency of storage, I believe, not a science guy, not the science guy, but is our metal hydrides more efficient of storing hydrogen at the, not calculating weight, but they could store more? That's a good question. Great I think question. so. Thanks, man. I think so. So, but that's, it comes all down to weight, right? So it comes the pros and cons. Well, it comes down to efficiency. Exactly. And weight is one of the biggest factors in determining efficiency, especially with vehicles. So it comes down to weight. It's, it, this is too heavy to use on a large scale car. That's why they use either uh, liquid hydrogen production or liquid hydrogen storage or uh, pressurized hydrogen storage. And I believe the Mirai stores hydrogen at a pressure of around 8,000 PSI. Pretty high. Yeah, it's pretty high. Okay. And I think we had one, so hydrostick. I think we pretty much covered all the bases, right? I think, yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to add. Sure. So we talked about weighing these things, mm -hmm. and we talked about creating some kind of a graph or a spreadsheet as a way to keep track of them. And just a really easy way that I like to do it, um, because this is really important for the simple fact that if this hydro stick, if I weigh it before and after, so we'll, this one's full. 91.6. 91.6. So let's just assume empty. This was 90.6, okay, mm -hmm. so that's roughly about a gram of storage, and, and the storage does vary between each stick, so you can have anywhere from 0.5 to 1.2 at the most, um, but the reasoning for that, like we talked about efficiency during the race, you wouldn't want to put a 0.5 gram fuel stick with a 1.2. This one's going to run out too quick, and then you're going to have basically just two lying off of one, so you want to match them. What, so you want to match one good one with one bad one? No, you want to match the good ones together. So it lasts and, longer. So it lasts longer. Also, because you can use that as strategy for the race, right? But also as far as weight. When you have weight on the vehicle, if you have slightly more weight on one side than the other, that's going to throw off the handling characters. Right. So in order to keep weight distribution even, keep them about the same. So if, if we're assuming both of these, let's just arbitrarily say these are both 92 grams, I would label both of these as one. So I know that both of my ones, these set are together. So you should have six sets and you want to optimize and find because you're only allowed to use 12. So six sets. Yes. And you want them to weigh the same. Yes. Will so, it make that big of a difference in a vehicle that is roughly how many uh, grams? Well, how much is like our... So the full car weighs close to five pounds. It's pretty heavy. Okay. Um, but for all intents and purposes of engineering, something to think about. Something to think about. So that's, this is an engineering challenge. So how do you get over that and reduce okay. weight? That's another, that's another episode. Okay. But I won't get into that now. So one question I know that came in was, is there like hydrofill? I know that maybe some issues might be having it. There's like something that gets stuck in the back. I think that would be a good thing to address. Some common, yeah. common things to uh, consider when using the hydrofill. Common troubleshooting things to consider. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this one, and there we go. You guys heard that noise again? That's the oxygen venting out. Um, one of the common issues that you're going to come across, and I think it might be more appropriate to let's use one of these. So, can you see this here? Give me the camera. Okay, so one of the pro common problems you're going to run into is you. This side is full of, of water, all right? Everything should be working. This stick is plugged in. 
but you're still getting the blinking red light. So there's two solutions to that problem. One of them is your water's too low. And if you guys can see that little blue donut in there, that donut should be snugly against the top. And if you notice, there's space between that. If there's space there, that means there's not enough water and this thing will not fill, okay? The second possibility is that as this is filling, a little bit of hydrogen and oxygen are being turned into water and it's coming back through on the other side. This is the overflow, okay? If the overflow gets too high, okay, it'll also give off this blinking red light. So what you would have to do, so in the first situation, if this is empty, just put more, more uh, distilled water in it. If this is too full, take some of that water out. You could use a sponge, you could use a syringe, find some way to get that water out. And then, it should work no problem. Uh, another error, another common error that, uh, that we found we've been dealing with here is that, I'm gonna come to you here. Let's go to this one. I, I like this above that one. Um, if we can see right there where my finger is pointing, you notice there's like a, right next to the brass fitting, there's like a little switch. Can you see that? Yeah, more or less. More or less. I'm gonna come this way. This camera might be a little bit better here. But if we see right there, can we see that? A little switch right there. Sometimes that switch can get stuck. And so what you wanna do is you can stick like a pencil or a paper clip or something in there and just kind of move it so it doesn't get stuck. Okay, uh, and that's it's just a pressure switch so that when you screw it down to a certain point, it tells this thing, hey, we're good, we have a hydro stick in here, we're ready to start filling. So that's, that's a common issue. Uh, I won't say common, but it does happen. So if that's happening to you, and then, so what you would get is a corresponding blinking red light, and that could be another issue with the blinking red light. So if you've checked both of these, uh, you have enough water, this is empty, and you're still getting the blinking red light, try this little switch, um, that may work. Okay. Right. And then I think one one thing, one question, hydro stick. So batteries have degradation, right? Like a phone. You leave your phone in charge over time, it has less charge, less charge. Yeah. What is the proper terminology for that? Degradation? Uh, that is called your cycle life. Cycle life. So a cycle is one complete charge and one complete discharge is one cycle. Okay. So the cycle life for one of these, and again, there is a range. Um, but I would say anywhere from 800 to 1,000 cycles is about normal. Okay. It's about normal. Is that better or worse than a battery? That is, I would say, on par with lithium, uh, lithium batteries. Oh. It's about the same. That's cool. Um, depending on the battery chemistry. Some of them are more, some of them are less, but then when you talk in terms of energy density, it gets a little cloudy. So, so is this thing basically the same thing as a battery? No. Uh, yeah. It is in the sense that it's storing energy for you. It's holding energy. Okay. But it's not, this itself will not produce electricity. This just stores hydrogen so you can run it through a fuel cell to produce electricity. This is not a fuel cell. This is a hydro, this is hydrogen storage. This so, is a storage container. So in a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, yes, just so comparisons in, in between a battery, mm -hmm. uh, electric vehicle, battery power, battery is equal to hydrogen, the mo and then what's the engine? Because the fuel cell is kind of creating electric current. Yeah, Where so the battery, a fuel cell vehicle is simply an electric vehicle. It's just a different way to store energy. Uh, and the main advantage to a fuel cell over batteries um, is really weight. I mean, you can store a large amount of energy in the form of hydrogen on a car. That same amount of energy you're storing in batteries would be really heavy. Again, we're talking about weight right. and energy density. So in that sense, it's more efficient. And then I guess one, one last question I have is, it takes five hours to fill up this. How long do you charge a battery at the same size? I would say probably maybe about the same. I would say anywhere from two to five hours to charge a battery, depending on the battery chemistry. Okay. Yeah, that's about the same. So you guys want to blow something up? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we are going to demonstrate uh, the amount of energy in a small amount of hydrogen. So hydrogen is very energy dense, as we talked about, uh, and it's also very reactive. So we're gonna do a, uh, definitely don't try this at home. Um, maybe your teacher or someone can, can help you with this. No, uh, no, no. A professional. This is for professionals only. This is a professional fuel cell guys only. So. And by that, I'm way too valuable for me to do it. So Stephen, go ahead. I would love to. <laughs> Uh, I love to, to uh, test things. So what we're going to do here is we have 
one of the balloons that they had to go produce is hydrogen. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this hydrogen balloon and we're going to expose it to heat. And we're going to see what happens. Okay? What would be a good indicator? I, I know first, first, first thing a lot of people always ask when you say hydrogen, what is the thing they refer to? Everyone always refers to the Hindenburg. This is just basically what happened? The, the Hindenburg was, uh, I'm not sure the exact year, maybe I think it was the 40s, but the Hindenburg was a blimp and it was filled with hydrogen, right? And we talked about hydrogen being lighter than air, so we put it in a blimp. Uh, it kind of makes sense in that sense. Uh, before we go to Omar and ask a question, so, uh, the noise that it makes when you release the hydrostat, that's basically just releasing the pressure that's built up from Yeah, there's some excess pressure in there that's built up through the process of the filling. That's normal. I wouldn't be too alarmed by that. Um, if you take the stick out and pressure keeps coming out, <coughs> excuse me, give us a call. Uh, that shouldn't be happening. But we can help you troubleshoot that. So I'll, I'll light it. There. You can light that. Let's stay over here. Show you the honors. And so the point of this activity is to show the amount of energy uh, in a small amount of hydrogen. And it's pretty reactive. So. That was uh, right on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can see there are some safety things to consider, but when used properly, that will never happen. Yeah, hydrogen uh, is very reactive. It's highly combustible, uh, but we're not combusting it to create energy. We are running it through a fuel cell, which is an electrochemical generator, uh, and we're using that to extract the energy from it rather than combusting it. So again, way safer. You don't have to worry about this with fuel cells. Um, but just to show the, uh, the potential energy of hydrogen, it, it's very high. All right. Uh, you know, this is kind of the point where we're going to kind of wrap it up, but if there's any questions that you have, uh, please send them through. This Saturday is the Southern California practice race, which can be at Steve Legacy. Please get a hold of contact to Steven if you haven't already done so. If you'd like to attend, please let us know. Even if you're not, we appreciate it. You send us an email. Um, but as, while we wait for maybe some things to roll in, what if we like teleported some food up here or something? Yeah, we have a pizza delivery coming in. Are we, our uh, uh, main office is gonna teleport some pizza up? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Where's the pizza laundry? Over there. There we go. Uh, guys. Okay, <laughs> well that wraps, uh, that wraps this one. <laughs> Are we done? Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>